Hello, I'm Dave and welcome back to the Retro Workshop. Well, it's just a shorter update video today, following on from my repair of this JVC monitor, where I repaired the scratch screen by removing this film from the tube face. But without it in place, you can see there's a bit of a problem. It looks a bit grey, a bit lifted up in the blacks in anything other than a very dark room. Now, having posted the video, various viewers suggested I investigate some window film. So I've gone away and done just that. And I've got a couple to try out. The first one is this one. It's a car tint for windows, privacy film. Uh, and I thought I'd compare that with a second type suitable for buildings, uh, for houses and offices to cut down on the amount of light coming through a window. So join me as I compare the two and see if I can restore this monitor back to its former glory. Placed beside another monitor, you can see the screen looks very light in comparison. With the monitors powered and displaying pictures, you can see the problem doesn't go away. It's all just a bit grey. What's needed to correct the problem is what photographers and TV lighting people would call a neutral density, or ND filter. We want to cut the amount of light without any colour cast. ND filters come in different strengths, so I need to work out the strength of the original film. Using my camera, which has a light meter, I held the original film over the lens, and this cut the light by about one stop. Now, a one stop reduction is the same as halving the amount of light, i.e. 50%. So I selected films that had 50% light transmission. And the tools needed for this job include a spray bottle, and this one produces a very fine mist. Also some washing up liquid and a squeegee, and this one has felt on it which stops the film getting scratched. You need to create a slip solution by adding a few drops of washing up liquid to the water in the spray bottle. I clean the tube face with some window cleaning spray, then unpack the first type of film. Now this tube got bent in the post and the package came with some links to YouTube videos and no written instructions. As well as damage to one side of the film because of the bent transit tube, this one looks wrinkly when unrolled. The second type of film arrived in pristine condition with a nice set of written instructions and a small test piece. The label reminds you to remove the clear film when applying the product. The tip is to use two pieces of sellotape on a corner to remove it. This is a little bit fiddly so practice is essential. To apply the film to the glass, first spray a generous amount of the slip solution, then apply the film. Next, peel off the clear film. This will reveal the adhesive side. Spray the adhesive side, then flip the film over so that the adhesive side sticks to the glass. Now work out the air pockets using the squeegee. I was left with a small crease, but I left this as it's just a test piece. I repeated the process with the other type of film. This one was easier to apply. I think perhaps it was a little bit thicker. And trimmed off the excess with a craft knife. I also applied a thin strip of the original film on the right and wiped off the moisture. As you can see, the film does the trick. It's interesting that both films are supposed to cut the light by 50%, but the one on the left is considerably darker. In fact, this is the one I prefer. With the workshop lights turned off, there isn't too much difference though between the films. With the picture tube removed from the monitor, time to apply the film for real. On this occasion, I offered up the wrong side of the film, so I then had to turn it round. A little tip, both my rolls had the removable film on the inside of the roll, so you should be able to avoid this mistake. Give this a good spray. And that goes 
that's the sticky side now that we've given it a bit of liquid goes on here This film really doesn't go on as nicely as the other type. Having finished, there's a defect right in the middle of the screen. This may have been some crud that I picked up from the workbench, having offered up the wrong side of the film. So I peeled it off and had another go. This attempt was just as finicky with small bubbles appearing, but eventually I was happy with the result. With the monitor reassembled and powered, I spotted another small defect. This one looks like a wrinkle in the film. But now I've run out of this darker film, so I'm going to have to live with it. It really is quite small, and at a proper viewing distance it isn't noticeable. And here's the finished result, which does look like a vast improvement. And side by side with my Sony PVM monitor for comparison, it's looking like the problem has been solved. Lastly, a comparison with some darker game graphics, and it's still looking good. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. I'm quite impressed with the result, and all for the low price of just £6.50 plus postage for that one metre cut section of car window tint. Okay, I've got that little tiny blemish on the screen there, but it's a sort of fiddly job I could do 10 times, and I'd probably end up with a tiny little blemish somewhere on the screen. So I'm going to call that a done job. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Bye for now.